Yo, what's up? This your boy Derek Branch here, Strike7Sports.com. Tonight's video, I just want to quickly recap um, the loss that went down today between uh, for the Memphis Tigers as they fell short to uh, Tulane Greenway by a score of 9-6-89 on the road at uh, Fagamon Arena, Fagamon Arena, down in Uptown New Orleans. But before I get to that video, um, let's recap. I just want to wish everybody out. Um, Happy New Year's and uh, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever you want to recognize it as. Um, hope you had a safe and prosperous uh, holiday season, New Year's as well. You didn't do anything crazy that you made it into the, made it into 2023 in one piece. But as for the Memphis Tigers, they start the year off on a on a sour note. You know, first conference loss of the season, um, one and one in the conference now. Year 11 and four overall in the season. Fell to a uh, pretty uh, tough, physical Tulane Greenway, Green Wave team that, you know, just based on all accounts, is on a bubble. Yeah, they lost five. They won seven games. The prize of this game, they led one. Seven games, lost five. But now um, they have a record of eight and five and playing with the Harris on fire in this game. Playing like a – had a similar type of mentality that the uh, – Memphis saw in the uh, South Florida game, team that's, um, you know, desperate, playing with their hats on fire, um, trying to get into the tournament, making a good, good impression on the uh, selection committee and all that good stuff. Tulane got it done today. Um, I watched the game, and I've been on a little break, you know, you know, I post, you know, content here and there, but overall doing videos, a little holiday break, but I'm back. Um, and I've been watching the games. I've been following the games. I saw, I saw what happened with uh, against South Carolina, South uh, Florida, the other day. Um, Memphis came from behind and won that game. But this one, it was a little bit different. Different result. So, um, Tulane was in this game for the entire, you know, from the entire matchup, from the first half to the second half. Man, they just did not quit. Man, and Memphis had his issues in the beginning. You know. Uh, they couldn't get any uh, three-point shots going. Um, the only thing they were doing was, was dunk attempts. A lot of these missed dunk attempts couldn't, didn't go through. And it was just a slow start for Memphis, man. Uh, Keyota Kennedy uh, made the uh, first three-pointer with 12.09 left in the uh, first half, man. And after that, man, Memphis was – that was like the only three because it was just – Memphis was three for 13. And then after that – one of eight for three pointers. So it was just another bad night from uh, beyond the arc from the three point line. So they had uh, three points, you had 10 to 23. You know, two lane, 11 to 26. You know, so it was just a bad night, three point shots. And this was kind of, this, this game, you know, it is, this, between this game and the South Florida games is just where I have my questions about this team and after going into conference play, you know, can they continue to, you know, show up against these opponents, you know, and I got, well, uh, I mean, show up against anybody that they play now that they're in the conference play, in conference um, competition now, you know, and those teams that they play outside the conference, Auburn, Texas a and um, you know, Vanderbilt, uh, Auburn, yeah, Alabama, Seton Hall, St. Louis. I think they're far better than what they just played, the teams they just played, you know, Tulane and uh, South Florida. I know they're, those squads are way better. But this was uh, this is the thing I was wondering about. Could this team continue that type of play, that type of style, you know, um, could, he, you know, could King Davis continue to do what he's doing? And so far he's doing that, he's done that. You know, just certain things, certain trends I was noticing with the team, you know. But we'll see how everything's going to play out. It's not the end of the world. You know, it's a tough loss, but it's, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not the, the death sentence, man. So don't overreact to this. But um, Kendrick Davis had another big night, you know, 31 points, um, uh, Four defensive rebounds, six rebounds overall, two offensive rebounds, seven seven assists, three steals, uh, 31 points. Paid another big night of big minutes, 37 points. 
31 uh, minutes for DeAndre Williams. 19 minutes. He played at 19 points. Um, 12 rebounds. 10 uh, defensive rebounds. 2 offensive rebounds. But uh, other than that, man, um, I mean, Alo had uh, 8 points. 2 rebounds. Uh, Two rebounds, two defensive rebounds, three offensive rebounds, one assist, one steal. Uh, Kelf then to play only three minutes in this game. Three minutes. No points, nothing. One rebound. Mars, Demar Franklin, six points coming off the bench. Uh, two turnovers, three steals. One assist, three rebounds. Um, this wasn't a good night, man, from the the, the supporting cast, man. It just compared to what Tulane did, you know, coming off the bench, man, they, they did pretty well. That that guy, RJ McGee, coming off the bench with just 14 points, played a huge part in that win, you know. And Forbes, uh, they shut they shut up. Uh, who else? Forbes had 21 points. James. 30 points, Cross 12, Pope 7, uh, I think that's the best, Pope is there, uh, Cook had 5 points, they, they shut him down, but it was just, it was just a bad, it was just a rough night for Memphis, man, because Tulane was just in this game, bro, and, you know, these are the type of games where, you know, you you wish that Demary Franklin was up to speed, you know, because, from based on the scout report and different um, college basketball aficionados saying about him, they say that he is a top scorer. He's a really good player. He's a really good scorer. And we didn't get that that, that extra that extra um, contribution from the third guy on his team, from the, the third scorer on his team. That could have catapulted Memphis to win this game. You know, it is... It happens sometimes, you know. This 14 points come off the bench was huge for Tulane. You know, um, rebounds. Let's see here. Rebounds. They had 40 rebounds. Memphis had 39, so that wasn't too bad, right there. They shut down uh, their best player. Memphis shut, you know, pretty good a, a solid job of shutting down um, a, a opposing team's best player. In games, they uh, shut down Jalen Cook, who was the, you know, a lot of people say that he's the, like one of the best point guards in the, in the conference, one of the best guards in the conference. He is two lanes leading scorer. He only had five points tonight. So good job taking him away, but the other guys ch chipped in, bro. The other, the other players chipped in and, and um, dropped 30 on Memphis. Cross put in 12, Forbes 21. So that's what happened, man. This is what happens sometimes in these games, bro. They, your best, they take away your best, their best player, but other guys came up, man, and, and, and showed out. And DeAndre Williams fouled out again, man. <laughs> he had fouled out with, I mean, I believe he fouled out with um, maybe like three minutes left in the uh, second half. Fouled out for, I believe, the uh, fifth time, four times this season, if I'm not mistaken. He fouled out this game. Yeah, he fouled out for the fourth time in 15 games this season with three minutes and six seconds remaining. He fouled out. Um, man, he just, I don't know, man. Like, this, is, this is the issue, man. It just, if you notice the trend with, with Memphis, if Williams is in foul trouble, Early in the game, Penny pulls him and he loses scoring. You know, that Memphis, you know, would get like a, a three, a two point lead, a one point lead in this game, and Tulane would just come right back at him. You know, that, and that place, you know, in Fogelman Fieldhouse, Fogelman Arena down in New Orleans, always, always has been a tough um, place for Memphis to play in. Last year, they were lost by 1.85 or 84. They go to FedEx Forum, get the revenge. That might be the case again this season, you know. 
Tulane, um, one I'm going to pay attention to how they perform the rest of the season. Uh, they have been a team that's been on the bubble to get to the NCAA tournament. So we'll see how everything play out with them. But other than that, um, Memphis will be okay. You know, uh, lick the wounds, get back to action. Um, a few days from now, we play, um, I believe we play East. Let me look at the schedule real quick. We play East Carolina on um, Saturday at uh, 1 o'clock tip off. So you got a couple days to um, rest, recuperate. Hopefully, uh, Malcolm Dandridge can uh, return to the lineup. Um, you know, see what happens with that situation. But um, Memphis got to bring it, man. Because what I noticed in the, in, in the, in the in, uh, AEC, in the American. You know, with Penny Hardaway that is the head coach of Memphis, these teams in the conference have Memphis circles on that circled on their calendar, and they get up for Memphis. You know, and the thing is, Memphis is not the now. Nah, I'm, I'm not putting Memphis down, but they're not the the best team in the conference. You know, the best team in this conference is Houston, and they don't get up for Houston like that. But for Memphis, they do. I don't know if that's because of the. The hype, you know, the 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 the, pro, the, pro, the, uh, the preseason hype around the team, or just Penny Hardaway being there, or just some other reasons. But the teams in the American, um, um, the AAC, get up for Memphis. You know, they come in motivated, play with their hands on fire. You know, and just ball out. You know, we saw it in, in the South the South Florida game. You know, but Memphis was able to come from behind and went and get that get the victory. But they play a um, they play East Carolina on um, Saturday at one o'clock um, on January seventh. Um, Memphis they give them ESPN gives them nine three point two percent chance of winning. You know East Carolina is ten and five, one and one in the conference as well. Memphis is ten and eleven and four, one and one in the conference. So interesting ball game, you know. And Memphis better come prepared. You know um, should have these. Uh, Next few days, I'll have to recuperate and be ready to go. So we'll see everything plays out. But you can't win them all sometimes, you know, and Memphis will be okay, I think. But Sion, Sion James, 30 points. Playing with the other players, 21. And the guy coming off the bench, 14 points, was um, just a little too much for the Tigers to uh, overcome tonight. But we'll see how it plays out. All right, that's all I have for y'all for right now, man. Give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how y'all feel, how you feel about the Tigers losing tonight's game. Also, check out Strike7Sports.com for latest content on the Memphis Tigers uh, football, basketball program, NFL, and NBA content as well. Happy New Year's. Have a blessed night. Peace. I'm out.